do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. Greater Oz again. So, this is kind of a different video. It's kind of me spitballing. Maybe I put this video up. Maybe I don't. But I've recently had kind of some revelations about my future. And it helps me to talk it through and, you know, re-watch my thoughts and think about it. And some of you may be interested and, and it may even be helpful to some of you. So, first of all, a lot of you probably know that I've spent a lot of time over the last few years thinking about what I'm going to do when I get older and, and what my future is going to look like and how could I scrape together some kind of retirement, you know. And I've kind of had this revelation, and it's something that, you know, I've really thought about a lot over the last 20 years. Uh, but not necessarily in the same way that I'm thinking about it now. So, like, our whole lives, we are indoctrinated into this system of the way life works and you know I've always been one who thinks outside of that but we all kind of grow up learning and seeing people who slave away their whole lives at a job and, and try to sock away money so that in the last say 10, 15, 20 years of their life they can retire and spend that time doing what they want to do and pursuing their enjoyments and not having to worry about financial constraints, etc. You know, and this is just the way everybody does it. You know, and it's what we see. Our parents put into their retirement account for all their lives and then at the end of their lives they retire, right? Well, I've been watching a, a certain type of video we'll talk about, but, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people make reference to the fact that, like, how many of us really get to enjoy that time? Not only uh, the fact that many of us don't end up saving enough to do that, which is probably going to end up being me, but how many people, like, slave away their whole lives working 50, 60, 70 hours a week and socking back money? so that they can retire and then retire and finally hit the spot where, they, where they're able to do this and then die three or four years later and not really get to enjoy it. Like, I think that that happens a lot more than we realize. And with my health issues and, you know, I, I'm not confident that I'll make it till 70 or, or 70 plus. You know, I'm just not. There's a pretty good chance with... You know, all the smoking and the alcohol and the partying that I've done my whole life and my issues with diabetes, there's a pretty good chance that I'll have a heart attack before I ever see that. And, you know, I've been on this kind of quest over the last, in particular the last two years, of trying to figure out a way that I can do that, that I can retire and, and hopefully a little bit early and, and be able to have this type of life where I'm living for me and not other people. And uh, during that quest, you know, my mind has gone several different places between like buying a property in Arizona real cheap and, and having a homestead or you know, all these different thoughts of these different ways that I might achieve that. And so during that quest, I've stumbled across, and, you know, I already knew about, like, van life and stuff, but I've stumbled across this whole train of thought of these people who, like, live nomadically. There are places in uh, BLM or Bureau of Land Management owns all this land, and you can go just post up, live you know, in an RV or something for two weeks, move to another spot, be there for two weeks, and then they, they'll, like, go to the national forest up in higher elevation during the summer. They travel with the weather. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, all right? But the fact is that if you think about it, like, 
I'm already doing that. Except for right now, I have to wake up when they tell me to wake up and and do what they were go where they want me to go. And I'm traveling the country, but I don't get to see anything. And uh, you know, a lot of people might think you know van life type, you know RV and stuff, whatever. Uh, you know, how could you live like that in such a small space or whatever? But I'm already doing that. You know, I mean, I live in this truck six weeks, then I go back uh, to Texas and stay for four or five days and come right back out for another six weeks. And I live in this small space, you know, and I've been doing it for three years and I'm relatively happy doing it. But how nice would it be to be able to live that retirement type of life now and focus on the things that I want to do now and, and travel now? instead of waiting until I'm potentially too old to even do it. And this has really captivated me, watching a lot of videos about people who live in this way. And there's a lot of them doing it on six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month Social Security. And there's a lot of people who saved up and just took off and, and are making it happen and have been doing it for years. Uh, and I've watched some of the, uh, some interviews and stuff. I mean, I've watched a whole lot of stuff about all this. But I've watched some interviews with people who have been doing it for 20, 30, 40 years. And the philosophy is very appealing of how they, how they look at it and how they, you know, are happy living on this small amount of money and enjoying their lives and stuff. And so I've been putting a lot of thought into potentially doing this and checking out of this lifestyle and checking into that one. It would allow me to travel and see OTO bodies and meet people and see people I haven't seen in forever. And, you know, uh, and if I could just save and get a rig built out, I think I could do it really cheap. Of course, fuel's really expensive, you know, and you'd have to you'd have to do that. But if you're staying in places for two weeks at a time and not moving very far most of the time, the fuel's not really that big of a concern. And beyond that, you got no rent, you got no electric bill, you got no none of that stuff. You know, maybe you got what insurance on your vehicle, uh, you know, a cell phone bill. You got to buy water and food. You know, and have a, an emergency fund to have may, be able to do maintenance on your vehicle. I mean, it, it really is not that much. And, you know, be, being that I've already lived in this small fashion for so long, like, I already kind of really know what I need and, and own most of what I need already, you know. So I'm really considering it. I mean, I, you know, I'm... I'm done a lot of thinking about what it might look like if I did that like would I buy a van and build out a van or would I maybe buy a cargo trailer a lot of people are buying these little cargo trailers and building them out as a living space on the inside or maybe just do it in the vehicle I already own and, and get a little trailer to haul behind it with solar and everything that I need self-contained in the trailer uh, I've thought a lot about it and, uh, you know, I have, I'm still kind of in the formulation and uh, decision-making process about whether I'll do it or not. But, guys, it seems really feasible and it's really appealing to me. Uh, with the way I live now and the way uh, CDLs and truck driving work, I could see myself, like, driving for a year and saving up. And then taking off for a year and a half, two years. And then when the money's starting to run out, drive for another year and save up. And then take another couple of years off. And until I am able to draw Social Security. And I think that this would allow me to live free now instead of waiting until I'm too old to really enjoy it. Like, you know... The Lima in the Book of the Law has a lot to do with personal freedom. Of course, there's discipline involved, etc. But, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of saving and, and investing and stuff, and I think that 
the investing is probably going to slow down a little bit and I'm going to start building up cash toward a big purchase, whatever that may be, uh, to, to try to consider doing this. Now first, of course, I have to get my teeth sorted. I've cashed in some investments. I've just about got enough to go in and get everything pulled and get dentures. I'm, I've been thinking about doing it this very next time I go in. Uh, but I may, it's going to be my birthday, so I may go in, take a week for my birthday, eat all the things I'm not going to be able to eat for a while, and then go back one more time out on the road and, and do it when I come back in next time. But either way, I'm getting these teeth taken care of in the next few months. Uh, whether it's in the next month or the next three months, it's, it's coming okay, in a big way. And uh, so, you know, I don't know if it'll be the next time I make a video, but I may be spitting and slobbering because I have dentures in my mouth, but I'm going to have teeth again. But, you know, the, the bottom line is, like, I want to free myself from this, you know, because if you think about it, we're all just working to enrich other people is what we're doing, you know, I mean, I make decent money, it's not great, it's decent money, you know, but the only reason it feels comfortable is because I have gotten rid of most of my bills, I mean, all I, all I really have is cell phone, a, a small storage that I pay for, and my insurance on my my personal vehicle and then some like Netflix and stuff like that and that's all my bills that I have in the world you know it's about $400 a month is all the bills I have in the world and some of that could be cut out uh, when you when you think about it like I say you know the vast majority of the 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 profit that's being generated through my labor is not going to me. And I'm wasting away out here, guys. You know, I really am. Like, I am. I have been out here away from OTO, away from people I care about, away from the ability to live my life for three years. I mean, I'm just, every year that I'm out here is another year older I get and another year closer to death and not being able to uh, really enjoy life. And I'm sick and tired of it. Uh, you guys, you know, if anybody else, you know, van life and stuff is a big thing right now. Uh, you, you should go check out uh, Cheap RV Living is a YouTube channel with this older guy and he's been doing it for since the 90s. He's been living in vans and cargo trailers and stuff like that and living this nomadic lifestyle. They kind of travel with the weather so in the summer they'll go down in the desert and then in the or in the summer they'll go up in the mountains up to higher elevations to cool, where it's cooler and then in the winter they'll go down to the desert where it's warmer and they travel all over and they'll get in these caravans and travel together and stuff. It's just super appealing to me. And, you know, and really like some of them, I don't know if I could successfully do it, but some of them are able to just support themselves by having a YouTube channel and doing stuff like that. And, you know, I'm fairly good at that. I, I think if I could get one off the ground to the point to where... I was making a little bit of money off of it, uh, I might could even support it just through YouTube and stuff. Guys, I'm just sick of the rat race. You know, a lot of us are sick of the rat race. And the rents are too damn high. You know, the rents have gone up and everything's, the price of everything's going up. And, you know, you a goddamn car payment is the same as a house payment anymore. And, and it's just... It's just crazy, you know, the way the world is. And if I could cut down and live a minimalist type lifestyle, uh, I just think I would be way happier. And I see all these people doing this nomad life type thing, and, and they all just, at least they profess to be really happy with their lives, you know, living their lives for them. And uh, I, it's 
really appealing to me. And it's it's grabbed something inside of me that I always kind of already had. You know, I I've, I've always felt like this rat race was a bunch of bullshit and felt like, you know, I shouldn't have to enrich everybody else to live my life and I shouldn't have to waste all my time busting my ass for the man and and I've always felt that way. But this this train of research that I've stumbled on has really made me start to realize that it is possible, that it's possible to live that retirement style life now and enjoy it while you're still pretty young instead of taking the chance of wasting your whole life away and then dying before you ever even get to enjoy it. None of, none of that's guaranteed, you know what I mean? You're, you're not guaranteed to even live to 65 to retirement, you know, much less be healthy enough to enjoy it. And with my health and stuff, I, I just don't, I'm not confident that I will be able to enjoy it when I get old. So it's something that's on my mind. It's something I'm really considering and thinking about. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of have a backup plan already. I think I've talked a little bit about this on here that I own a piece of a house in Mississippi and I'm kind of hinging on that as a backup plan. But uh, I think this is feasible and I think I would enjoy it and be able to travel and, you know, visit OTO bodies and stuff like that, you know, I mean, like, I feel like it would fulfill me, and I don't know, what do you guys think, you know, and then there's the consideration of what kind of vehicle, and, and, you know, how much would it cost me to build out, buy and build out a van or cargo trailer or something like that, and the more I think about it, so I own a, I own a 1995 GMC Yukon, all right? And you probably think to yourself, man, that's almost a 30-year-old vehicle, and it is, okay? But the thing about this truck that I have is that I bought it from a friend of mine who I've known forever, and he's really OCD. And so he has gone through this truck and replaced, I, I talked to him on the phone the other day and got a, a list of all the stuff that he's done. So he, he had a new engine and transmission put in it. Now that's brand new, not rebuilt. Brand new in the box, engine and transmission put in it. He had the four wheel drive transfer case all done, differential all looked at and done. Uh, let's see, uh, new engine, alternator, battery, starter, water pump, all the shocks, all the brakes, complete, not just pads changed, completely redone. Uh, the radiator, uh, the tail lights and mirrors, all of the wiring harness when he had the engine done, brand new wiring harness, uh, you know, and then there's stuff, the fuel injectors, and there's stuff that I did to it, like wiper motors and wiper uh, board and you know, all this stuff's been done to this truck, and the thing about it is that every single part that's been replaced on this truck, I mean, other than the engine and transmission, uh, was bought from like AutoZone and O'Reilly with a lifetime warranty on it. So anytime almost anything goes wrong with this truck, all I gotta do is walk into an AutoZone and give them a phone number and the part is free. So while it's an older truck, it's just hard for me to justify thinking about getting rid of that in lieu of something else. And so I've seen all these videos where people are taking that exact truck and turning it into this overlanding rig with like a bed in the back and stuff. You know, they're turning it into basically something that you can live in. And so I'm not sure that I want to get rid of what I've got when I could do something with it. And it just keeps me that much closer to the end goal. I mean, maybe I get a cargo trailer and build that out and pull it behind the truck. Or maybe I do end up buying a van and doing it that way. That seems really like the best way to do it is with a van rather than a trailer or something. But I don't know. There's a lot of things to think about. I just, like it's really been on my mind, you know, like disciplining disciplining myself to save what I need now 
in order to obtain this freedom. And I think that it's very a thelemic concept, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, finding this, this ability to be free and pursue your will. I mean, depending on what your will is, I guess, you know, but uh, maybe your will is to work for the man and, and have a bunch of money. But mine never has been. I've, I've never been focused on things and, and, and being rich and having a bunch of money. I've never been focused on that. I've always been focused more on being happy and fulfilled. And I'm feeling like this lifestyle might be exactly what I've been looking for. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Have you ever looked into this stuff? Maybe some of you are doing it right now. You know, uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I just wanted to spitball. It helps me to come back and watch this stuff. And, you know, and, and I know at least some of you are interested in where my thought process is, what's going on in my life. And I thought I'd share with you. Love is the law. Love under will.